So the final thing I want to talk about is regulation of the citric acid cycle. Okay, there's three points of regulation that are essential to understand, and they are the reactions catalyzed by citrate synthase, isocitrate dehydrogenase, and alpha-ketoglutorate dehydrogenase. Those are our essential um, steps. And if you notice, that's steps one for citrate synthase. Isocitrate dehydrogenase is one of our oxidative decarboxylation steps. Okay, that's coming at step three. And if we talk about dehydrogenase, that's our other oxidative decarboxylation step, step four. Okay, so these are steps one, if I can get my pen here to work, one, there's steps one, three, and four, okay, in the citric acid cycle. Those are the ones that are regulated. Those are the ones that are important in terms of understanding what's going, what's really going on. So the first step in the pathway is under regulatory control, okay? And it's under, it's under regulatory control by allosteric inhibitors, okay? And those inhibitors of citrate synthase are ATP, NADH, Susquenill-CoA, and the product citrate. Again, that's feedback regulation with citrate there. We're having, you know negative feedback here from citrate. We produce enough citrate, we have plenty of citrate, no reason to make more. It's regulated by its own product, or it's also known as product inhibition, I should say. So those are the allosteric inhibitors. And regulation by uh, of alpha-ketoglutorate dehydrogenase complex, okay, because that's also a complex, inhibits ATP, is inhibited by ATP, NADH, and Susquenille-CoA. Now, I mean, it makes perfect sense that something like this is going to have is going to be um, an inhibitor because if there's plenty of ATP, why go through the citric acid cycle? The whole point of the citric acid cycle is ultimately to produce these reduced electron acceptors and higher energy molecule GTP, but mostly to produce these reduced electron acceptors that allow aerobic respiration to really produce these really large sums. Uh, somewhere between 30 and 32 ATPs. You know, there's differences depending on the tissue you're in and the tissue you're talking about, but produces a bunch of energy. So if you have plenty of energy, there's really no sense in going through the citric acid cycle. So that's why something like the regulation of the alpha glutorate dehydrogenase complex is regulated by ATP and NADH because both of those are signals that the cell has plenty of energy. Okay, and regulation of isocitrate. I kind of skipped that over here. But regulation of isocitrate dehydrogenase, I have AT, ADP and NAD plus are activators. Again, makes perfect sense. If ADP is present in high concentrations or NAD plus is present in high concentrations, it's telling you that the cell is low on energy. I mean, this is just, you know, kind of intuitive. So I just want to finish off with these ratios because these ratios become important. This is a common question on exams. They say, you know, when the cell is metabolically active, okay, it uses large amounts of ATP and NADH. So if the ratio of ATP to ADP is low, so if we have a small ratio for the ATP to, for ATP to ADP, then more energy is required. Okay, Citri the citric acid cycle must be upregulated. We need energy. We have low ATP, essentially is what that's saying. And it goes the same for NADH and NAD+. Okay, if NADH ratio to NAD plus ratio is low, then you need energy. Time to go through the citric acid cycle. Upregulate. So these ratios the, in the body, in the cell, are a lot of times determining, you know, whether citric acid cycle is going to be upregulated or downregulated. Okay, it's one of the essential factors in determining that regulation. It's also an essential factor, I will point this out right now, that it's also essential for um, the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, okay, because that is also heavily regulated by the ratio of ATP to ADP and NADH to NAD+, okay. Because all of it has to do with the same cycle. I mean, although it's a separate step and they don't really consider it part of the citric acid cycle, I do consider it part of the citric acid cycle because we need acetyl-CoA in order to enter it into, it can only enter into the citric acid cycle, uh, well, I shouldn't say only, but it, but it enters the way we're thinking about it in, in terms of carbohydrates. The glucose is broken down and it enters into the um, citric acid cycle as acetyl-CoA. So we need acetyl-CoA. And if we're talking about resting cells, resting cells have a high ATP to ADP ratio. 
and a high NADH to NAD plus ratio. So high amounts of NADH and ATP signal to slow down the citric acid cycle, okay? They signal down regulation of the citric acid cycle because there's plenty of energy. No need to keep making more, okay? So I just wanted to point out that ADP and NADP plus, or NAD plus rather, serve to regulate the oxidative reactions. So it's extremely important, and that's essentially how the regulation of, of um, citric acid cycle is accomplished. It's mostly accomplished by those two ratios. Very important.